अध्यायेत पद्मासनास्तां विकसित वादनं पद्मपात्रायताक्षिं हेमाभं पीतवास्त्रं कारकलितं लासद्धेम पद्मां वारांगीं सर्वालंकारयुक्तं सतातमां बायादां भक्ता नाम्राम भवानीं श्रीविद्यां शांतां उल्टिं सकलं सूरनुत्रं सर्वसंपाद प्रादात्री She is seated on a lotus. She has a charming face. Her eyes appear elongated like the petals of a lotus. She has a golden complexion and her clothes have golden sheen. She holds a golden lotus. She has a sculptured figure. She is wearing all types of jeweled ornaments. She constantly protects her devotees. Her devotees bow down to her, and she bows down to listen to the needs of her devotees. She is the embodiment of all the mantras and tantras of Sri Vidya. She is calm and composed. She is worshipped by all gods, which emphasizes her supremacy. She endows wealth to her devotees. Namaste. So this is the third of the Dhyana Shlokas, the meditative verses that open Sri Lalita Sahasranama. And in this beautiful verse, uh, the Sanskrit is a bit tricky, but the meaning is very clear. So let's go through one by one the words in this verse and their meanings. Dhyayet means meditating. I am meditating on her because this is the purpose of Lalita Sahasranama, to fix the mind on her because she is the Saguna Brahman, Brahman with qualities, the manifested Brahman. Padma Samastan seated on a lotus flower or seated in lotus posture. Either way, she's often uh, shown as seated in half lotus with one foot up on her thigh and the other foot down to give blessings to the devotees. Here's a little video clip showing the goddess like that. Jwala Jwala Dhumra Vikasita Varanam means charming face. Vikasa also means moon. So in other words, she has a moon-like face. I didn't know what this meant until I went to India and I met people who have moon face. Their, their faces are very round. Uh, and flat. <laughs> they kind of look like the man in the moon, you know, a little bit. Uh, but these are typically tribal peoples from the Vindhya mountains and Himalaya mountains. And this is, of course, where the whole cult of goddess worship comes from. Then Padma means lotus, Patraya means petal, and Takshim means eyes. Thus, her eyes are elongated, big like the petals of a lotus flower. And this is also meant uh, 
means beautiful eyes, beautiful as the petals of a lotus. He ma bam means golden complexion, and pita vastram means wearing clothes with a golden sheen. And kara kalita means holding in her hand. Lasat means shining. So she is all golden and shining uh, and beautiful in every way. We can't compare any earthly female or even heavenly females with her because she is literally the reservoir of all beauty. Indeed, uh, even the gods derive their beauty from her. So we can't imagine how beautiful she is. Uh, one time my Adi Guru said, if you ever saw actually a heavenly woman an earthly man would see a heavenly woman, he would pass semen immediately. <laughs> so much beauty, it's just inconceivable. And she shares this beauty with her devotees. Indeed, she shares all her wealth with her devotees. Then, uh, karakalita means holding in her hand. Lasat means shining. And Hema means gold, or beautiful woman, Padma. Thus, she is the most beautiful woman, like a, like a lotus. All her limbs, all her bodily parts are extremely beautiful, even by themselves. And when they're put together, wow, it's just overwhelming. Vara and Angim the most beautiful bodily parts. Then Sarvalankar, Yuktam. She is adorned with all types of jeweled ornaments. Alankar means ornaments. And so her entire body from her crown to her anklets and even toe rings is festooned with beautiful gold ornaments. But the thing is, it's not that the gold ornaments give their luster to her, but she gives the gold ornaments their luster. Then, uh, satatam, continually. Abhayadam, bestowing protection. Abhaya means fearless. She gives fearlessness to her devotees constantly. Uh, as much as we remember her. And of course, the preferred practice in the Sri Vidya is chanting the Maha Sodashi Mantra. And one should get initiation in this mantra and chant it constantly. And then she is always protecting and one gets complete freedom from fear. Uh, bhakta, devotees, Nam Ram, bowing down. And to whom? Bhavaning. Bhavaning is the wife of Bhava or Shiva. Shiva Bhavan means that which becomes. So just by the presence of Shiva, then the whole process of creation and becoming is there. She manifests spontaneously from his energy. She is his energy. So Bhavani, by, by worshiping her in this form, we also master the process of becoming and we're able to become anything that we want. Sri Vidyam means the mantra and tantra shastras the worshiping rituals of Shakti. So uh, we've been discussing for some time now the ontology of the goddess, which is the basis of the Sri Vidya. Vidya means knowledge, especially scriptural knowledge. And Sri, of course, refers to the goddess, specifically Lakshmi, 
or the goddess of wealth. So this implies the wealth of the devotees is the worship, uh, because this worship gives such auspiciousness that no suffering, no calamities, none of the changes in the material world can touch you or disturb you. Shanta plus murti means the form of tranquility. Shanta means peace. So she is the very form of peace. Shanti, shanti, shanti. And this means that when you worship her, she grants this peace and you feel a complete absence of disturbance. No desires, because all desires are fulfilled by her. And no uh, ignorance, because she gives all knowledge, vidya. And no hankering, because she is Sri, the goddess of wealth, and she gives all wealth to her devotees. Sakala Sura Nutam means worshipped by all the gods and goddesses. And Sarva Sampat Pradatrim, giver of all wealth. So, when one worships the source of all wealth, one automatically acquires great wealth. And this wealth can be material or it can be more subtle. You know, uh, I have Mars exalted in my chart in the 10th house of work. And every time an astrologer looks at my chart, he says, oh, you must be wealthy like Bill Gates. <laughs> or I guess it's uh, somebody else now. What's his name? Elon Musk, <laughs> the richest man in the world. And I say, well, no, actually, <laughs> I have enough, but I'm not really materially wealthy. I'm wealthy with knowledge and realization and bhakti because she actually gives herself to the devotees who develops bhakti for her. Uh, we talked about love of the self as the highest pinnacle of bhakti. And this means that one worships her as one's very self. And this may seem strange because we're normally conditioned to think of God or goddess as someone outside, another person, a different self. But actually, she is the self of all. Therefore, when we worship the self with a capital S, we're actually worshiping her. She is the cause of all the manifestations. And she is the source of all the opulences of the gods and goddesses. And therefore, they're eternally indebted to her and worship her with beautiful prayers. And um, maybe in one of these uh, daily sutras, we'll get into some of these prayers. And uh, we'll talk about how she brings protection and well-being and wealth to all her devotees. So the translation then is, she is seated on a lotus. She has a charming face. Her eyes appear elongated like the petals of a lotus. She has a golden complexion and her clothes have a golden sheen. She holds a golden lotus. She has a sculptured figure. She is wearing all types of jeweled ornaments. She constantly protects her devotees. Her devotees bow down to her and she bows down to listen to the needs of her devotees. She is the embodiment of all mantras and tantras of Sri Vidya. She is calm and composed. She is worshipped by all gods, which emphasizes her supremacy. She endows wealth to her devotees. Aum Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum.